Hi there, my name is Will, and today I'm gonna to show you how you can use DBT with BigQuery to be able to perform loads of transformations easily. Now, in the previous videos, we used a, we used BigQuery and GCS to be able to get loads of data from GitHub in CSV format and be able to put them into one big table. Now, the issue here is that data is still very unuseful to us in its current format. So we can use DBT to transform it in a very simplified way to give us loads of useful data that we can then start to look at a little bit easier. And in later weeks, you'll use DBT even more to be able to visualize what's going on inside of the data set. So this is just a sneak peek of how Kestra can help you enable that, but this time with BigQuery. Now, jumping into Kestra, we already set up GCP. So you should already have this set up. If not, check out the previous video to get that working. And as you can see, we've already got these key value pairs already set up. Now, what we're gonna look at today is the DBT for Google Cloud. And just to double check, what you should have in your Google Cloud instance is a bunch of tables that have been created for 2019 data or 2020. I've done all of 2019 and that's all combined into this one big yellow trip data table at the top, which we can see here. And you can see there is a lot of rows in it. So it could take a little while. So bear that in mind. We also wanna do the same for green, which I haven't done yet. So I'm gonna do that first and then we're able to run this ready for DBT. Okay. So now we've got the green trip data and the yellow trip data. So now we can go to our flow and we can go to that DBT uh, GCP flow where we can double check that we've got everything configured correctly. Now we can see it's gonna sync all of those files for the DBT project from a Git repository, similar to the Postgres DBT video we did previously. Underneath that, we're gonna see that it's going to use the things that we set in the key value store. So it knows the database and it knows the schema are already preset. Afterwards, we can see that it's gonna use DBT BigQuery and it's going to run in Docker and we can see it's got the Google Cloud credentials as well so everything is preset for us because of the setup we did earlier and here it's got access to our database because of what we set up earlier so all we now need to do is press execute and let it run and we'll see that it will produce a few new tables inside of BigQuery to be able to help us get ready and set up for being able to do more transformations on the data. And as we can see, it's starting to get to work. So now if I refresh the page, we should hopefully see a number of new tables. Here we can see it's starting to produce a few different things here. So we can see here, it's got different fields. We can see it for both green and yellow. And this is starting to look quite similar to what we saw with Postgres, where we can see all of those different fields here. So now what we've got to do is just wait for it to finish which it has finished, as we can see, it's finished now. It's done all the different things. So now let's jump into BigQuery. Let's refresh that page. And what we're gonna do is have a little look inside of those tables to get a little bit more information of what's going on. So here we can get a little preview. This looks similar to what we saw with Postgres, but this happened way quicker and did it all inside of BigQuery. And the best bit is it did it for much more data too. For Postgres, we only had three months, whereas here we have 12. I can click into here as well and preview the data here. And we can see that this is in a much more useful format. We've got fact trips as well. And we can see, yep, again, it's done everything we would expect. We can be pretty happy that this has worked as needed. So stay tuned for week four, where DBT will be covered in way more detail and you'll be able to use this data and take it even further. But the key takeaway here is that Kesha made that really straightforward by allowing it to just pull the data automatically. We didn't have to go and spend ages configuring Google Cloud because we've done all of that configuration with the key value store. So again, really helps to orchestrate all these different moving parts and bring them together. Hopefully you found that useful and you're looking forward to week four where you can take this even further. If you have any other questions about Kestra or workflow orchestration, let us know in Slack where we'll be keeping an eye and giving you a hand throughout the project. Hopefully you found this useful and we can't wait to see what you build with Kestra.